there's a school bus with a plow mounted to it, plowing our road. Good morning, everybody. Since we have a huge snowstorm that is coming in, it's supposed to snow all day today, it snowed all night last night, and it's supposed to snow all day tomorrow, which is great. We're having a very normal, wonderful winter here in the north. I That makes me happy. Um, so I thought today would be a great day to do something I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is convert my sourdough starter. I have been doing sourdough for the last couple of years now. I had a really rocky start. Um, if you want to read a really funny story about um, every fail that I've had, head over to my website and I'll link it in the bottom in the description below. Um, and I have a blog article I wrote about all the ways that I have failed making sourdough. Uh, I, I'm sure there's even ways that I didn't post and that I failed. <laughs> so one of the reasons that I failed so many times was because I was always trying to keep up with my sourdough starter and feeding it twice a day and then it would make way too much and it would bubble over. Part of the reason that I have had so much trouble is we live in a log cabin and it's very cool. And I did not know that warm water or cold water made a difference. And there was lots of things that I didn't know about starting sourdough. So I failed many times. I killed many starters, um, but I have since then continued to practice and try and I have gotten it much better. <laughs> and I can do it pretty consistently at this point. So something that I recently learned, uh, Shay Elliott at Elliott Homestead, she has a YouTube channel if you want to check her out. Um, you do not have to feed a sourdough starter every single day. In fact, you don't even have to keep a wet sourdough starter at all, which is high maintenance. You can take your wet sourdough starter and actually turn it into a dry starter. So it's not, it's not that you're, you know, it's going to be as dry as flour, but it is going to be a lot more dry than a wet starter is. So today I'm excited to share with you guys how I'm going to turn my wet starter into a dry starter. So we're following along with what she said. If you do not have a wet starter, that's fine. She has a great video on how to just start a sourdough starter. And I highly suggest that you watch that video. First, we're gonna use our scale here. I have, a, it's just a little cheap scale off of Amazon. Um, and then we're gonna tear it and make sure we're at zero, which we are. And we also are going to be using grams um, for measuring. The reason that you want to use a scale is because it will give you a more consistent result when you're making your breads. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about having a more consistent bread turnout. <laughs> Takes a lot of time to make sourdough and I don't have a lot of time that I am willing to waste. So first we're going to pour in um, 20 grams of our starter. Add in, um, I have my notes over here. We're gonna add in 50 grams of water. So we're gonna tear it back to zero. And then add very slowly 50 grams of water. Pretty close to perfect. And then we're going to tear it again and we're going to add a hundred grams of our flour. Perfect. Okay, we can turn our scale off and then we're just gonna mix this together.
Now you have sort of a sticky, kind of tacky. It's not, um, like it doesn't really stick to your hands a, a tremendous amount. Um, and you're just gonna work it around a little bit. Uh, according to Shea, your hands and um, your kitchen should be colonized with wild yeasts. And I would imagine at this point, mine is quite colonized as I make lots of ferments and uh, different things. So, but she says to get to know your sourdough starter. So that's what we are doing. Turning it into a little friend. So once you are done with that, you are just gonna put it into some kind of glass bowl like this, and you're gonna just leave it out at room temperature um, with a little lid on it. Let's see, does she say with a lid? Yep, I think so. And then it's gonna just stay out on the counter for a couple of hours and it should become nice and bubbly. Now, if you're changing a starter that's used to having a lot more water in it, it might take a couple of feedings in order to kind of get it acclimatized to the new method. So that's, that's been the number one. The way I generally feed my sourdough starter is that I, when I'm ready to make bread, I try to plan at least 24 hours, even up if it's very cold in my house, up to, to 48 hours in advance um, of just being able to proof my dough. That's not even including the bake time and the leaven time. That takes a long time. Um, so I generally just take a little cup like this. I add in about a third of a cup of flour in here, a third of this cup, not an actual third measuring cup. And then I take warm water, just a little at a time. And you're looking for a very stiff biscuit dough. And you want to incorporate all the flour and all the water. Now you can do this by measuring and you would just do equal parts water and equal parts flour. But that's not how I have done it in the last couple of years. And I have had pretty good success and pretty consistent results um, just doing it by texture and look. And then you're going to take your active sourdough starter, which you can see it's got some bubbles in there. And um, you're just gonna mix that in. There we go. And then you can either put this in the refrigerator for about a week and make a, a loaf of bread next week, or like what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on the counter until either tonight or tomorrow, and I'm gonna put my little coffee filter on the top of it just to keep bugs out or whatever, dust. And it's gonna get nice and bubbly. Um, now, one of my main problems with um, having a wet starter like this is that you end up with way too much starter, which is one of the reasons that I don't make bread all the time because it just keeps growing and growing and growing and I don't have time to maintain that much starter. So I am very excited and I will definitely do another video, an update video on how this is going um, and how this is going. I I'm excited to, to see how bread will turn out. And um, I think she said that she has a recipe which she uses. So I may make two loaves of bread with this and see if I like her recipe or the one I've been using better for the dry method. And then I may also do a the same thing using her favorite bread recipe and the original recipe I've been using and see which 
the difference just so that I can test and see how it's going. I feel like that will probably help us. So I would love to know how ha have you made a sourdough? How does that go for you? Do you have questions on sourdough making? Um, I am certainly not a pro at it. I just know a lot of things not to do. <laughs> and I would be happy to do a video if you were interested on um, problem solving your sourdough because I have become pretty good at that considering all of the times I've failed. So I would encourage you if you have struggled to make sourdough in the past, uh, give it a try again, see, and, and never give up because eventually you'll end up with amazing loaves of bread and I will take you along to make sourdough bread for sure. I know that that's always a wonderful hit in our family. So, um, yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this quick little video today. Um, if you are in my area, somewhere in the Northwest, I hope that you stay safe in this big snowstorm and we'll see you again next time.